Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I want to look at the modulus function. It's a nice little topic that connects well with other videos I've made, such as graph transformations and functions. So do check those out as well and I'll make a playlist. I'm going to look at equations, graphs and inequalities using a couple of examples for each. As ever, please do grab a pen and paper, pause the video and have a go at the questions yourself, rewinding and fast forwarding as you need. I hope this is helpful. Let's get started. For the modulus, we use these two vertical lines here. And what that means is modulus of x is 5. Modulus means the size of the value. So it doesn't care about whether it's positive or negative. But so in reality, this x could be positive or negative 5. So if you modulus a number, you're getting rid of the sign and you're just focusing on the number. So if you've got an equation such as this, the modulus of 2x plus 3 is 11, what that means is 2x plus 3 could be positive 11 or negative 11. So to solve that equation you've got two options and it's good to consider them separately. So if 2x plus 3 is positive 11, then we can solve it to get x is 4. And we also need to consider the negative case. Simple as that. Let's look at a slightly more complex equation. Another equation here, have a go at this one. Positive and negative case. This time we actually get four solutions because when we square root here we get two solutions and that's for each of them. So we've got positive or negative root 11 and positive or negative 1. It also sometimes helps to draw graphs so you know how many solutions to expect. Um, so let's look at how to draw the graphs now of modulus functions. As an example let's take this function here. I've not defined what the function is. It looks like some sort of negative cubic but I'm not going to write out what it is. I've just made up a curve here to get an interesting shape. Now there's two modulus graphs you can draw. You can take the modulus of the whole of the function or you can just modulus the x. So if you're modulusing the whole of the function then you're modulusing y because y is all of that. So say for the function you get a value like minus 4. If you're taking the modulus of that then you'll just be giving 4 rather than minus 4. So wherever the y values would be negative, we're actually taking the positive value of them. So that means on the graph, we're not going to have any negative y values. They're going to become positive instead. So of the original function, all the stuff that's above the axis will stay the same because that's all right. That's all positive. So it's kind of like that. And then these bits that are underneath the axis, the negative y values, they're all going to be made positive by taking the modulus of them. So as I said before, if you've got a value like here that's minus 4, it's going to bounce up and become 4. Or a minus 5 would become 5. So they're all just going to bounce up. So that's how to draw the graph of the modulus function, is keep the bits above the axis the same and then the bits that are below just bounce them, reflect them up above the x-axis. So you get some really interesting looking graphs doing that. Let's look at this one now. So this time we're not modulusing the whole function, we're just modulusing the x. So um, it takes a slightly different logic. Um, first of all, all the positive x values will remain the same. So everything that's this side of the y-axis will remain unchanged. But what's happening is if I take an x value like minus 3 and put it in, then it'll get modulus to become 3 and then that will go into the function. So whether I use the input of 3, so we've got a point here that when x is 3, if I stick that into the function I get this y value here. But if I put in minus 3, it will get modulus to become 3 again. So if I input minus 3, it will still give us the same value as it would for positive 3. So what's going to happen is all of these positive x values will repeat again in the negative x space. So 
the way to draw this graph is to cut off everything on the left hand side of the y-axis and then reflect the stuff that's on the right hand side that way. Again, another very interesting graph. So I hope you followed the logic there of how to do those. Once you get your head around it, they're quite easy to draw and quite fun as well, I think. <laughs> Let's look at another example. This time I'm going to use some actual um, numbers so we can see what's going on. So let's take this function here, y is x squared plus 2x minus 3, and I want to sketch that original graph first before we do the modulus graphs. The way I'm going to do it is to factorise that, and that gives me the x values of where it crosses the axis, and the minus 3 on the end tells me where it crosses the y-axis. I know it's a quadratic, a positive quadratic, so it's going to have that shape there. And if you need to refresh your graph sketching skills, you can check out my video on that. And now we're going to try drawing the modulus graphs. So here I've modulus the whole function, and here I'm modulusing just the x. So modulusing the whole function, all the y values, the negatives, will get bounced up. And it's going to cut the y-axis at the same point, so that minus 3 will become 3, if that makes sense. And for this graph, the x values are getting modulus. So all the positive next x values will look the same, and the negative x values will be the same repeated on that side. Great, well done if you're getting those. It does take a little bit of practice to get the difference between those, so do have a go at a few of them. Now let's take a look at inequalities. Okay, I've set up an inequality here, and I've written um, one function on the left hand in blue and the other function in green. Um, the reason for that is the easiest way to think about a modulus inequality is to sketch the graphs of both of them and then look to see when this one is above that one, because that's greater than. So we'll have a go first at sketching these modulus graphs, and we'll do it on the same pair of axes. So let's start with sketching 3x minus 2. If you think of the straight line y equals 3x minus 2, and then do the modulus bit. So let's start actually just by sketching the straight line y equals 3x minus 2. It'll cross down at minus 2, and it's going to have a steep gradient of 3. Um, you can find where it crosses the x-axis with a little bit of working out. So that's the straight line, and then to turn it into the modulus, we're modulusing the outside, so it's the y values that are going to get it bounced up. So that minus 2 will bounce up to positive 2, and we'll lose that down there. So that's the blue graph, now let's try the green one. y equals x plus 4 is going to cross the y-axis at 4, so oh, this is going to go way higher than I've allowed for. And again, it's a positive gradient, but it will be much less steep than the other one. Okay, I've just moved that over and extended my graph. Um, the modulus of the graph, where this cuts over here, it'll bounce up, but that bit isn't going to come into the picture here. I'm only interested at where these cross, really, so I'm not going to bother extending that back. So we're looking at where the blue is greater than or equal to the green. So that's going to happen at these points where they cross. The blue is greater than the green from that point on, when x is greater than that point, and from this point back, so when x is less than this value. So we need to find where these lines cross. Um, putting the functions equal to each other will help us out. Um, the normal 3x minus 2 equals x plus 4 should give us that one. And this blue line here, remember that was the bit that was reflected when it was modulus. So that's actually, that's come from where the blue line was negative. So we can set two equations up. one for the positive and one for the negative. Let's solve those now. So 
So by solving those, and they do look reasonable on the graph, I found that this point here should be when x is 3, and x is minus 2 should be that point there. That looks about reasonable, I hope. Obviously it's not to scale, but that's okay. Um, so the blue is greater than the green when x is greater than 3, so on from there, and when x is less than minus 2. And it's equal to as well, so we'll include those values. So that's our solution. Let's try another one of those. Okay, let's try another inequality and we'll do the same. We'll sketch the graph first. So have a go at doing that. Okay, so I've sketched those two graphs again in blue and green. Um, and these points here will be the points for our inequality. So we need to find where they cross. So setting up two equations like before. Um, when you do this, by the way, it doesn't actually matter which one you make negative. You could just multiply that side by minus 1 and make that side negative, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. Let's solve those now. Okay, so we found the two x values of where they cross, um, and this time we're looking for where the blue is less than the green. So the blue is underneath the green when we're in between those two x values. So the solution will be when x is between those two numbers that we found, so 3 quarters and 5 over 2. And that's it. Great. As I said before, this topic connects really well with a lot of different topics. So some exam questions will use a combination of modulus, graph transformations, logs, exponentials, trig, all of that stuff. So keep practicing plenty of different questions and enjoy. Hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching.